It's day 70, and we're going to talk about Shh. secrets. Now, we're not talking about the secrets that we keep from other people, or in fact, the stuff that we put in our own secret diary a few lessons ago. No, what we're talking about here is storing important variables that we wouldn't really want in the code elsewhere. Now, what, what's the point of this? Well, there are loads of things in programming that you will need to keep in the code so that the code works that you probably wouldn't want other people seeing. Now, a good example of this is putting in things like passwords into the code. For instance, on Replit, by default, we all know that every REPL we make is public. If you put the password for your secret diary straight in the code and somebody else forks your REPL, well, they know the password now to your secret diary. What we want is a way for somebody to fork our REPL and not get those passwords so they can supply their own. Now, in the real world of programming, normally this is things like API keys and usernames and passwords for databases and things that your program might be connecting to that you don't want everyone else to see. To access the secrets, you will need to pull up the toolbar on the left and select secrets. Now, secrets are very easy to produce. And in fact, they share a lot in common with dictionaries. They have a key name and a value. So I'm going to set up my password with the value baldy1, the classic password that I might use. As soon as we've done that, we get a bunch of things down here that are quite important for us. And they do use the OS library. So we're going to import at least the OS library. And we're going to build a really, really simple password login system. And we're going to store a really, really simple password with this. And what we're going to do is bring down a variable and access the secret. So I'm going to call my secret password. And you'll see what I'm doing here is I'm using the OS library to talk to the environment settings of the operating system and ask for the password. This is a really nice use of OS. because It's basically saying, Oi, what's the password you've got saved? Cool. Now, when you fork a REPL, these secrets don't go with it. They are yours. They're in your REPL. If I run your REPL remotely, it'll run with your secrets. But if you fork it, you don't get those. You have to provide your own. So that means if I'm asking my user for a password, I can just use a simple if here now. If user pass is the same as password, print while well done. Otherwise, print better luck next time. If I run that program, it asks me for my password. Better luck next time. But if I put my password in as baldy1, it'll work. And the nice thing about that is the secret is stored here. If I need to change it, I can go in and change it or outright delete it if I want to. The thing about secrets is we are storing really important pieces of information in a place that can't be forked. You can't give away any important information now to anybody that might want to remix your code. And that's really, really powerful. Common problems of this? Well, there aren't really. The most common problem is where you haven't actually set the environmental secret yet. So if I go and delete this password, I can show you what happens. We get this massive error and it's basically saying, look, I've talked to the operating system. It doesn't have a password secret for me, so I can't compare anything, which is fair enough, really, isn't it? So the only way to fix that is to put that key in. And of course, we could change the key up if we wanted to. And now if I run it, my new password will work. But that is the only error you're likely to see. I've broken some code. Well, I'm sure you'll find out how to fix it very easily. But go and have a look at that. Your challenge today then is to build a login system with two types of user. One is an admin user that has a specific username and password combination. And one is a normal user that has a different username and password combination. When the admin user logs in, you should say, hello, admin. When the normal user logs in, you should say, hello, normie. And that's it. That's all I want you to do for now, because storing and using secrets 
from within a REPL is very, very straightforward, but you need to master it before we move on. When you're complete, publish it to the community. Share it with us with the hashtag REPLIT100 Days of Code, and we'll be very happy to see what you've built on social media. Okay, so there is a little problem with that. If we're storing secrets in plain text, like we're literally typing in the passwords, then that can have some annoying side effects. We're going to look at how we might professionally store passwords in a system using hashing and salting. And no, this isn't a way of cooking breakfast foods. Thank you.